it seems like a pertinent time to talk about guns. So I want to talk about the Second Amendment, assault rifles, background checks, and mass shootings. The Second Amendment says, A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Emphasis on well-regulated and necessary to the security of a free state. People roll their eyes at the idea that, well, it's important to have guns because if a government ever became tyrannical, you'd want to be able to resist them. Because people think, well, the government's so powerful that they can screw you over anyway, and we live in a surveillance state with technology that far exceeds the capacity of any individual to fight back, so it's ridiculous to begin with. And while there is some truth in that, if everyone in a country is armed, then resistance is much more likely, and it's much more difficult for a tyrannical government to take over, whether you admit it or not. And the idea that, well, we're in America, that could never happen. I think that comes from a place of privilege and arrogance. The idea that, well, history is over because we live in the present moment. And even though all of history is, you know, characterized by tyrannical takeovers and the infringement of people's rights, well, it just won't happen here because human nature has reached its apotheosis in America. So I do agree that a Second Amendment is necessary for the security of a free state. I also believe that it should be well regulated. What does that mean? I applied for a FOID card in Illinois, a firearm owner identification card. And I took no classes, no training. I just filled some forms out and got a background check. And as of today, I can go into a gun store and buy an AR-15 with no training of any kind. To me, that's a little ridiculous. I think if you need a license to drive a car, which I think is a reasonable thing, you should have to take a good amount of training in order to buy a high-powered rifle. Most people are in support of background checks. I am too. I think if you have any history of mental illness, you shouldn't be able to purchase a gun. Now, when it comes to assault rifles, here's the only way to think about the problem. I think any other way to conceptualize the problem other than this is... I think foolish and a waste of time. If you support the Second Amendment, then you recognize that law-abiding citizens should be allowed to own handguns, but not allowed to own RPGs. And if you think that people shouldn't be able to own handguns, I think you don't support the Second Amendment. And if you think people should be able to own RPGs, then you're so detached from reality, I'm not interested in including you on in the conversation. So the question is, where do we draw the line? RPGs are illegal, light machine guns are illegal, armor-piercing bullets are illegal, and at a certain point we draw a gray line, well, are shotguns legal? Mm, sure. Are, is an AR-15 legal? As of now, it is. So there is absolutely no way you can decide whether or not a certain type of firearm should be legal or not based on some uh, moral principle or some axiom. It is purely a practical decision based on the evidence, how dangerous this is, and if we allow it, how many people will die, and if we don't allow it, you know, what's the cost? Which is very difficult to calculate because it's hard to calculate the positive impact that guns have. It's impossible in some sense. You can't get statistics on number of crimes per prevented or, you know, amount of crime that was deterred by seeing a gun or something like that or amount of tyranny prevented. It's a completely abstract idea, but to pretend that the utility of guns just doesn't exist because we can't put a number to it is silly. The issue is whether or not AR-15s are legal does not actually have that significant of an impact in terms of the number of people killed by guns. Most gun-related homicides involve handguns, not AR-15s. So banning AR-15s doesn't actually make a difference there. And the mass shootings that captures everyone's attention, like the ones at schools, well, those can occur with handguns. The Virginia Tech massacre was done with all handguns. And this is the worst part about this whole issue, is, you know, with the events that happen in Texas, it's like, I, I legit was thinking to myself or it felt wouldn't it be better if humans just didn't exist because then you wouldn't have all this shit you wouldn't have these you know kids locked in a room as hell gets unleashed and it's like then you wouldn't have all these narcissists on social media you know using this for political clout and all this shit it's like mass shootings can happen with or without assault rifles so that whole conversation is irrelevant to the fundamental issue it is a mental health issue whether you believe it or not the rates of gun ownership i believe are similar between the u.s and canada and in, in, in some other countries and yet it's only in america that these things happen now part of that is there's 300 million people in america and so as soon as you increase the population it literally literally takes one out of 300 million to cause a worldwide news event like what happened in texas and here's the other problem the problem is is how we cover it. Because, you know, the problem with what happened in Texas and what happens in schools is that it gets so much coverage because most people... It is a testament to how safe our lives are that something that occurs every single day, which is children getting killed. I literally had a notification today that a nine-year-old was shot in Skokie. And I, it was just like, you know, of course, that parent is just as devastated as the parents in of the kids in Texas. And it's like, the fact that now I'm even having to make this point about, well, you know, a family losing their child, we shouldn't be comparing the pain. But only one thing gets coverage when in reality, kids are dying every single day. 
in America, least of all the world. And it's these events where people like me who grew up extremely privileged and, you know, in safe environments think, oh, wow, something terrible happened in a place where I grew up or a place that looked like the place that I grew up. Well, now it's so much more tragic. And it's like, hmm, well, you know, convenient to ignore all the other kids that get killed all the time. And with the shooting in Texas in particular, it looks like there could be details that are coming out about how the cops didn't go in when they should have and all this non nonsense and stuff. It's like there's always going to be specific details around each shooting. And to pretend that we can legislate laws that will prevent these other than banning all guns, which is simply never going to happen. We have to look what's underneath this whole issue and its mental health. That's my perspective. And, you know, I uh, certainly could be wrong and um, I'm slightly emotional about it, I guess. But if I am wrong, I'd like to hear. Um, why? So, good luck and Godspeed as always.